G'day Legends, Blake here with another video and I got a super exciting fish yesterday which I thought would make a fantastic topic for today's video. So let's jump straight into it. We'll have to carefully sneak up on them because they're still not quite sure about me yet. But as you can see, in here we have some absolutely monstrous snakehead gudgeons. These snakehead gudgeons I got yesterday from All Fish To You. They came in that shipping box over there, nice and warm, really fast, basically overnight and I absolutely love them. I was so stoked to see their Facebook post that they got in some rare and unique fish and I jumped at the opportunity. So huge thanks to All Fish To You. It's not sponsored or anything and I paid real money, but um, generally I just order my fish through there and it's always a great experience. So uh, check them out. Now it's quite likely that you've never heard of snakehead gudgeons before because even here in Australia where they're from, they're really rare and they're not very affordable. But the good news is, is that there are heaps of affordable options that, of freshwater gudgeons that can be kept in your aquarium and that you're likely to find at any good local fish store. Not to be confused with gobies, gudgeons are a freshwater species of fish. Sometimes they can tolerate brackish, but primarily they're a freshwater fish. And gobies actually are probably more prevalent within the saltwater community and brackish. They do look very similar and they both inhabit the bottom areas of the aquarium. However, the long and short of the science is, is that gobies belong to the family Gobidae and gudgeons are a completely different family, Eleotridae. They are a really straightforward species to keep and I myself have kept and or bred purple spot gudgeons, empire gudgeons, firetail gudgeons, and now snakehead gudgeons. I'm a big fan and there's lots of reasons why. Caring for gudgeons is pretty straightforward. It's not difficult whatsoever. As a general rule of thumb, they're gonna be omnivorous feeders that are gonna to take to pellets and flakes in time. You might need to start them off on some frozen bloodworms and things like that to get them used to a, a prepared diet, especially if they're gonna be wild caught. However, after a while, they should take to any aquarium food uh, that you offer them. Of course, vary it by their size. For example, these snakehead gudgeons here, which are probably six or seven inches or 15 centimeters or so, they're not gonna really care that much for a small pellet or even a bloodworm are they because they're so much bigger. I'll run through some imagery of some of the species to give you an idea of what to look out for. We'll start off with firetail gudgeons. These are the cheapest and most accessible where I'm from and actually they're often sold as feeder fish. Firetail gudgeons are great for ponds and dams but they're also great uh, aquarium fish. They're not going to show a heap of color but they're nice and natural and they do have some pretty good finish. I think they're a great entry level gudgeon because of their awesome price point and availability and you'll be able to get a nice group of them if you like uh, which will fill out you know a decent aquarium. I'd recommend starting off with around about the 60 centimeter slash two foot aquarium uh, just as a good starting point. In terms of availability the next two are going to be empire gudgeons and peacock gudgeons. Peacock gudgeons are going to show fantastic coloration and you can get awesome yellows and purples and Beautiful, beautiful fish. They can be a little bit nippier, a little bit more aggressive than some other bottom dwellers. However, I still just think that they make a welcome addition to any tank with tetras and things like that. All of these gudgeons as well, even though they're bottom dwellers, they can have a propensity to actually jump. So keep tight lids on aquariums with any of these as well. Peacock gudgeons are great and empire gudgeons also really fantastic. The males are gonna show a lot more color than the females. One day actually, they're just gonna burst. I remember getting two of these little brown fish in an order of other fish I got from a sort of a native fish seller. I had no idea what they were except overnight, I had this beautiful orange, black and white fish and uh, then was able to easily identify them as empire gudgeons. Absolutely a great experience with these guys and the males can actually get a fair size to them. So they're a fantastic option as well. And they're easy to identify males from females, which is also a win. The next size up that you're likely to encounter is probably gonna be a purple spot gudgeon, which I've kept and done videos on before. And if I can find some of that footage, I'll have it here as well. Purple spot gudgeons are gonna get closer to the four inch mark or the 10 centimeter mark. A great sort of medium sized fish. Gonna show some beautiful coloration, obviously being called purple spot gudgeons. They're gonna have beautiful sort of purple coloration, red spots, and again, pretty peaceful, but a, a fish that's getting up into that 10 centimeter range, of course, they're gonna eat anything that can fit in their mouth. So don't house them with smaller things, and they definitely will eat shrimp and things like that as well. 
The next one up from there is pretty confusing because it's actually called the Sleepy Cod. However, it is a type of gudgeon and uh, they appear very sleepy because they hang out on the bottom of the aquarium. Gudgeons, they're really not that active of a fish. So if you want something that's going to be swimming all over the place, these are not the ones for you. They're going to basically lie on the bottom of the aquarium until it's nighttime when things get pretty busy. But um, Sleepy Cod get around 8 to 10 inches or 25 centimeters long. Again, a great fish, really fun to feed and things like that once they get to know you and, and sort of warm up. So now that we've run through some of the options and you may or may not have selected one that you'd like to try out, let's talk about setting up the tank. Now, I did mention that gudgeons will probably hang out on the bottom of the tank the whole time, just sitting around until the lights go off. And that's where caves are really, really important for setting up gudgeon tanks. For example, these easy caves here are probably great options for empire gudgeons and those species that are around the two inch mark, but they'll hide in there quite happily, sheltered, safe, and really comfortable. And then for the more large species, you might want to create a bit of a rock pile or a wood pile, or I like to use some terracotta pots as well. Now in terms of water parameters, pretty simple uh, rule of thumb, about 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 22 to 27 degrees Celsius, uh, pH between 6.5 to 7.5, around about neutral, plus or minus, and lots of nice clean fresh water, as is generally the case if you want to keep healthy fish. One other thing, if you do want to create a bit of a pile of sticks for them to hide in, then avoid really sharp edges like this because gudgeons do scare sometimes and they do sort of fly around the tank when that happens. So you, you want to avoid stuff like this where they could accidentally thrash around and swim into it, poke out their eye or anything like that. And on that topic, don't put really, really bright lights on there. They're going to like it dark and safe and that's perfect conditions for them. So I also mentioned that I have bred gudgeons in the past and whilst I hope to be able to breed these one day, pretty straightforward to breed. They're gonna lay a big cluster of eggs on a surface. So like the outside of these terracotta pots perhaps, up the walls maybe, or underneath this piece of driftwood. They're gonna just put a big batch there and the female will generally fan them and keep them pretty safe for a few days until they hatch. Once they do, it's pretty much a free for all. They might be good parents and look after them for a couple of days, but if you've got smaller fish as well, they're really gonna pick off any fry. So I do recommend once they get to the free swimming stage to take the parents out regardless of the species. In any case, the parents will probably breed again. So you'll probably have twice as much fry in no time. Conditioning for spawning and triggering spawning is not unlike many other fish and it's not difficult to do. Basically, you just want to feed protein rich foods like frozen bloodworms and things like that. That's going to fatten them up, give them plenty of extra energy for some extracurricular activities once the lights go off. And to trigger them, you're just going to want to do a water change with water that's a couple of degrees cooler than the tank water. That'll simulate a rainfall event. If it is raining outside at the time, that can also be a bonus because fish can actually detect the barometric pressure change. So that will help even more to convince them that it's raining outside, there's food aplenty, and it's a great time to raise a family. Sex and gudgeons can be a little bit tricky, but it also can be pretty easy depending on the species. I'll show a few examples on the screen now. Like it's quite different here between the male and the female with snakehead gudgeons. Purple spot gudgeons though, are a bit of a different story, although the female is going to be quite a bit smaller than the male. But if you're in a fish shop and you haven't been able to determine whether they're the same age, well, you're not going to be able to know which one's smaller or bigger, or maybe just younger and older. So uh, empire gudgeons are a great starting point, I think, because it's super obvious with those guys. Otherwise, pick up a group of six or eight and have a backup plan in case you do get some males fighting. I don't find them to be a hyper aggressive fish, but yeah, they can get a little bit aggro and nip each other's fins and stuff like that. You can see the tank that these guys came from. The female has got a little bit attacked on the fins and so has this male. That was because there was four in one tank. Once they do spawn, gudgeons typically have fairly large clutches of eggs, often up in the hundreds for a healthy pair. So hopefully you have plenty of gudgeon loving friends that you can pass some fry onto or a good hookup with a local fish store to be able to pass them on. But in any case, it's just a really great experience. You'll get some beautiful fish at the end of it. And yeah, it's definitely a bucket list one if you haven't kept and bred gudgeons before. 
So there you go guys, hopefully today's video has enlightened you as to the difference between gobies and gudgeons, how to feed them, breed them, care for them, and hopefully it's encouraged you to pick up some gudgeons the next time you see them at your local fish store. A fantastic bottom dwelling fish, which is just gonna make a great addition to whatever tank you're trying to set up. So if the video helps you out, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.